Before we look at the graphics processing unit, the GPU, let's quickly review the workings of the central processing unit, the CPU. A central processing unit is a general purpose processor designed to run programs that can perform a vast number of different complex tasks. A typical CPU has between 2 and 16 cores, a far cry from the original von Neumann architecture with only one core. This is a quad-core CPU. Each core has its own control unit, its own arithmetic and logic unit, and its own set of registers, so each core is capable of executing program instructions independently of the others. If the software you're running has been written to take advantage of multiple cores, then doubling the number of cores will roughly double the rate at which instructions are executed. More cores means more parallelism. Each CPU core has its own level 1 and level 2 cache memory, and they all share the same level 3 cache. High speed cache memory can be accessed much more quickly than the main memory. Cache memory stores instructions and data that are frequently used by the CPU, so it serves to keep it fully occupied, while instructions and data are copied to and from the main memory. The memory and graphics controller circuits are integrated into the CPU chip. The memory controller is connected to the main memory, that is, the dynamic random access memory, DRAM, via the memory bus. And the graphics controller is connected to the graphics adapter, that is, the GPU, via a different high-speed bus, such as PCI Express. These days, modern personal computers include an expansion card called a graphics adapter, or graphics card. A graphics card is a circuit board specifically designed to handle graphics operations, freeing up the CPU for other tasks. A graphics card has its own memory to store the data that it's currently processing and to act as a buffer between the CPU and the display. This memory is sometimes referred to as VRAM, video RAM, and sometimes as the frame buffer. The amount of memory on a graphics card is typically 8 to 10 gigabytes, but it could have much more. It's similar to the double data rate DRAM used in a computer's main memory, but it's highly optimised for bandwidth, so it's much faster. GDDR DRAM, as it's known, has a much wider memory bus and more channels than regular DRAM. It also uses less power and generates less heat. In 2020, GDDR6 is the latest generation of graphics card DRAM, with a data rate of 16 gigabits per second. A graphics card has a number of capacitors that regulate the voltage applied to various components. It's not uncommon for some or all of these capacitors to blow and need replacing. The voltage regulator module is then connected to an external power supply. The graphics card has another interface to which a cooling fan is attached. The cooling fan can be switched on and off by the graphics card when needed. Of course, a graphics card needs to be connected to the CPU. A set of gold pins allow for attachment to the graphics bus. It may also have pins that allow multiple graphics cards to work together, such as SLI or Crossfire interfaces. A number of external connections allow the graphics card to be connected to a monitor. These may include interfaces for HDMI, DVI and DisplayPort. Each of these has its own advantages and disadvantages in terms of bandwidth and frequency, that is how many times a second the screen pixels can be refreshed. DisplayPort and DVI have refresh rates of up to 144 Hz, but DVI is video only. DisplayPort supports multiple video streams, network and audio signals. Needless to say, this comes at a cost. HDMI supports audio too, and it's relatively cheap, but it's also relatively slow at 60 Hz. The most important component of a graphics card is the graphics processing unit itself, the GPU. 
This is where the graphics processing work is really done. In fact, it's so important that people often refer to the whole card as a GPU. Keeping the GPU cool during operation is vital. The graphics card is therefore fitted with cooling fins. On top of these are cooling fans. A modern graphics card working as hard as it can can be rather noisy because of the cooling system. Let's take a closer look at the graphics processing unit itself. A GPU is designed primarily to handle the graphics pipeline, which is also known as the rendering pipeline. Rather like a factory assembly line, the graphics pipeline is a series of stages that take a huge amount of numerical data about a three-dimensional world and turn it into a two-dimensional image that can be displayed on a flat screen, namely colour information for each and every pixel. When it comes to interactive computer games and virtual reality, this involves millions of calculations every second, because the scene may be changing at an incredible rate in response to input from the players. This is called real-time rendering. The majority of the calculations involved are geometry of one kind or another. In a three-dimensional scene, each model is made up of simple polygons, usually triangles. Each triangle is made up of three points, known as vertices. The coordinates of the millions of vertices in a 3D scene are stored as vectors. Matrix arithmetic is used to manipulate these vectors according to a branch of mathematics known as linear algebra. But that's another story. Suffice to say for now, moving, rotating, resizing, shading, smoothing, projecting, and ray tracing are the work of the modern GPU. Compared to a CPU, a GPU is designed to perform relatively few operations, but very quickly indeed. A GPU therefore consists of hundreds of lightweight cores, sometimes referred to as shader cores, each working on its own share of the millions of data streams being processed in parallel. Because many of the cores are performing the same operations simultaneously, but with different data, instruction decoding can be done for a cluster of cores all at once. Hence, a cluster of cores can share one control unit. This is known as the single instruction multiple data paradigm, SIMD. If one particular core is held up because it's waiting for data, it can very quickly switch to another instruction stream to maximise the throughput. Like a CPU, a GPU also has various levels of cache memory. A cluster of cores will share a level 1 cache, and all of the cores will share a level 2 cache. This is, of course, a very generalised view of a GPU. Graphics cards and GPUs are big business these days, and the underlying technology is advancing at pace. This is driven mainly by the expectations and desires of gamers, who continually demand better performance, leading to more immersive and realistic gaming experiences. Some GPUs have cores and cache memory dedicated to specific tasks in the graphics pipeline, for example when applying materials and textures to a model. The latest NVIDIA series of GPUs includes additional cores dedicated to real-time ray tracing. This means applying physics to calculate the paths of light rays in a 3D scene and to calculate how the light interacts with different materials and textures. The concept of ray tracing is not new, but ray tracing in real time is a relatively recent development. And the effect is nothing short of stunning.